one item on the wish list of several Alti PLC users is an LCD interface. Alti PLCs, being programmable logic controllers, operate within a time limit called cycle time or scan time. For efficient performance of Alti PLCs, the scan time is kept below 5 milliseconds. Integrating LCD functions into the Alti PLC will increase the scan time to 200 milliseconds, which will greatly reduce the performance of the PLC. The way out is an LCD with mode bus communication. Mode bus communication with Alti PLCs can easily be achieved since the PLCs are mode bus slaves by default. This will require an Arduino Nano to be programmed as a mode bus master. A 16x2 I2C LCD will be connected to an Arduino Nano as shown. A push button switch is also required to scroll through the mode bus registered data displayed on the screen. And this setup will be programmed with the FL Probe IDE. FL Probe uses PLC function blocks to produce Arduino codes, making it suitable for this application. So let's create an Arduino Nano project in FL Probe. Expand the project tree on the left to display the mode bus options. Double click on mode bus master and select to connect the master arrow to you. Expand the mode bus master arrow to you to reveal the URAT options and double click on URAT. Select serial zero and click OK. I will maintain the URAT speed of 9600. Double click on pin PEDE and select No. To attach a slave device to the master, double click on Add Slave and create a new slave with a mode bus address of 1. Expand the slave option to display the mode bus register options. Coil tags are created by double clicking on Add Coil. I will use the out CPLC output labels and a starting address of 0. Also create a coil tag for arrow.2. Add two more coils for out memory bits at addresses 128 and 129. Similarly, create two discrete input tags S.1 and S.2. And two input register tags for analog inputs A.1 and A.2. Also, create two ODIN registers of I.1 and I.2 with the integer data type selected. Then add a digital input named scroll to pin 12 with bounce protection and pull up resistor enabled. For the mode bus register values to be shown on the LCD, drag an LCD display block into the program and double click on it. Add an LCD and select the I2C type. My I2C LCD address is 27. Impute a data constant of coil. Select row 1 and to center. Copy and paste the display. Change the data type to impute and select row 2. Drag arrow.1 and arrow.2 mode bus tag into the program. Drag two byte conversion blocks in front of the tags, as well as two converter string blocks, and connect them as shown. These blocks will convert the mode bus bit data to bytes and then to strings for display on the LCD. A string concatenation block will organize the strings on the display. Right click on the first input of this block and insert a constant of arrow.1 colon. Also, insert a constant of space arrow.2 colon to the third input. Connect the two converted tags to input 2 and 4 of the block and its output to the second display data input. 
this section will only display the coil register data. To scroll through the other mode bus registers, add a board above. Create an integer variable tag called count and drag it and the digital input tag to the program. Drag a counter block into the program and configure it as a up counter with an upper limit of 6 to start counting from 1 again. Connect the input and variable to the block. Add the count variable and a comparator block to board 2. Connect the variable to input 1 of the comparator and make input 2 an integer constant of 1. Then connect its output to the EN inputs of the display blocks. Copy this section of board 2 and paste it into a new board. Add and connect the memory bit tags as shown. Change the comparator's second input to 2. The concatenation blocks first and third input to B.1 and B.2 and the first display data constant to memory bits. Repeat similar steps for the discrete inputs with the comparator input changed to 3. The concatenation block input to S.1 and S.2 and the display data constant to discrete inputs. For the input registers, only copy this section since it is an integer data type. Change the comparator input to 4, the concatenation block input to A.1 and A.2, and the display data constant to input registers. Repeat this last step for the only registers with the comparator input of 5 the concatenation block input of i.1 and i.2 and the display data constant of holding registers. Then upload the code to the Arduino Nano with the port number selected. The different mode bus registers are shown on the LCD with zero values when the switch is pressed. Let's get the LCD to show read time values from an LC PLC by programming one. Insert a contact into the room for input S.1 to start an SPWM with on and off values of one. Insert a contact and two coils in a branch into another room with the SPWM variables P.1.ST, arrow.1, and B.1. Then a contact for B.1 and a counter with a preset value of 100. The value of the counter ACC will be copied into I.1. Finally, the analog input port will be enabled for reading. In the settings menu, I will select Nano V5 and use the Arduino Nano for the test. Select the port number for the program upload. The same Modbus board rate and address that correspond to those of the Modbus LCD should be selected here. Then upload the codes to the PLC. To connect the Modbus LCD to an RT PLC Mega or Nano, you will require a TTL to RS485 converter model. The TX pin of the model will connect to the RX pin of the Arduino Nano and its RX pin will connect to the TX pin of the Nano. The A and B pins of the model will connect to those of the PLC Mega and Nano mode bus slave. Since I am using an Arduino Nano for the RT PLC Nano, I am just going to connect their TX to RX and RX to TX. When switch S.1 in the RT PLC is engaged, the arrow.1 coil output changes every second, and so is the memory bit P.1. The analog inputs display random figures because of the absence of sensors. Finally, the counter ACC value is displayed in holding register I.1. Thanks for watching. If this video is helpful to you, please show your support for this content by clicking on the thanks button. Also, Click on the like button and share your thoughts in the comment section. 
Bye for now.